I think one of the most interesting reflections or meditations that we can do from time to time, and I think also some of the other monks also doing it together with you, is what we call gratitude practice. Because it's just such a beautiful, wholesome activity to bring to mind the various smaller and larger good things that we have in our life, which often we tend to take for granted. So doing it in a more formal and deliberate way, we come to realize that most of the things that we think we need, we might not need, whereas those things that we have already are often more than sufficient for giving us a sense of happiness, contentment, joy, and actually we just need to attend to them rather than taking them for granted. So for that reason, let's get into our meditation posture. We're sitting upright and relaxed. For the purpose of this practice, we close our eyes. And we relax the body. Or make small adjustments if necessary. Letting go of the past and the future. Just being present. With the sense of alertness, knowing that you're here. We are not trying, not trying to see or experience anything special. But the most special thing is the sense of presence itself. Of being conscious. For the sake of this gratitude practice that we are about to do, we keep the eyes closed so that the awareness and attention can be bundled and combined and brought towards those mental themes and topics that we want to contemplate about. So that the mind is not so easily distracted by things that the eyes might see. Therefore, for the purpose of this particular practice, we close our eyes and try to recall some of the good things that we experience, maybe even on a day-to-day -day basis. without which our life might look quite differently. It is still morning time. 
So the night is not long over. Most likely you had a good fortune to lie down and sleep in a bed. And most likely the bed is more than just a wooden frame, but you had also a soft bedding, a mattress, that increased the comfort. Again, this is something to be grateful and appreciative about. That we don't have to sleep on floors. Or that we can adjust the height of the legs if necessary. Then also most likely, some of you might have had already breakfast. You didn't have to worry about finding food, didn't have to go hunting for it, or searching for it in the forest. No, you already had a stock somewhere. So we can be grateful for having access to resources like food. Maybe even more than enough. Maybe even a variety of things. Nowadays, you can go to the market and buy food and fruits from all over the world. Many of them exotic fruits that don't even grow here in our environment. Yet, we are able to experience them at no high price either. Even just 100 years ago, 150 years, even the most rich people in the world wouldn't have daily access to this kind of variety of fruits and food from different countries all over the planet. Nowadays, almost everyone here has easy access the fruits from every corner of the world. Likewise for medicine, when we get sick, in the past, people could get whatever was growing in the environment, or in the vicinity of whatever herbs could be collected. Nowadays, we can get medicine again from all over the world. And there's a whole field of study where experts dedicate their entire lives to doing research about what helps for which disease. Many medical advancements have been made in the last hundred or just fifty or twenty years. Again, even the most wealthy and rich person hundred years ago didn't have the same amount, the same quality of medicine, 
the same quality of treatment opportunities that we have nowadays. Something to be grateful for. Something to be recognized. We can protect the body from cold weather by clothing, or if it's really getting cold, we can turn on maybe a heater system, a radiator. The same about hot weather. There are fans or even air conditions. So with the switch of a finger, we can adjust the room temperature. Amazing. And even nowadays in some parts of the world, not everybody has access to electricity in the same way as we do here. Not everybody has access to some of those gadgets and tools, like an air conditioning system. So still hundreds of thousands and millions of people are living without that. Not because they choose to do so, but because there's no option. We have family and friends. parents, either they are still alive or have passed away, but without whom we would not be who or what we are now. Who have shown us the world since the time we were small, have cleaned us numerous times, have helped that us have helped us out of difficulties and most importantly who have forgiven us for all the smaller and larger stupidities that could have crossed our minds over the years or for the things that we may have said or done who have forgiven us wholeheartedly and kept supporting us all their lives. This is something very special, something to be very grateful for. The unconditioned love and care that our parents have given to us. Sometimes later in our lives, later in their lives, we may get an opportunity also to show our sense of care towards them. When they get older and need our help, when we get an opportunity to give something back, or 
or maybe even better, being able to establish them in the Dhamma or strengthen their faith in the Buddha's teachings or their commitment to virtue, to ethics, to sila. In this way, we can also give something back to them that has high value. Provided they're interested and open to it, of course. And we can also be grateful not only for our parents, but also the extended family who have supported us and are still supporting us in various ways. Again, our lives would have looked very differently if we had grown up and met only our parents alone. No other family members. So most likely we had a good fortune to be taken up into a larger group of family, of friends. Who have supported us in each in their own way and helped us on the path. And especially if you have a very close friend, maybe for since many years, with whom you share uh, your private life, who is giving an ear from time to time, offering support, friendship, This too is something very special. Not everyone has a close friend to whom one can open up and who himself opens up his heart, her heart, to receive whatever is going on with us. Again, this is something to be thankful, grateful, appreciative about. And the list would not be complete without noticing also the good fortune of having encountered the Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha at some point in our life. Whoever has introduced us to that, this person too deserves a very special place in our hearts by introducing us not just to a religion, but to a way of life. How we ourselves can learn to overcome our suffering and establish the mind in peace, mindfulness, wisdom, and a sense of well-being and happiness.
whoever introduced us to that or nudged us in this direction deserves a large amount of gratitude. Whatever books or dhamma dogs that have done that job for us, the authors of which they do deserve our gratitude, appreciation. And if you had the good fortune to learn not only from books and Dhamma talks, but also to meet some of these teachers in person, or getting an opportunity to ask questions, or having the chance to sit together and meditate together for a while, Again, only very few people get the opportunity to do that. Again, that category of people, of our Dhamma teachers, spiritual guides, we owe much of our spiritual development. something to be truly grateful for. The support, the time, the care and compassion that we have received from our beloved teachers. Most importantly, one teacher, without whom none of us would be here, the Buddha himself, the awakened one, who took the trouble and spent so many years of his lifetime sharing, educating, making the Dhamma not only known, but also make it clearly understood, so that even nowadays, so many years later, we can still practice accordingly and derive benefit. How wonderful the service that this person has done towards all of us and whomever is interested in learning from it. Establishing our hearts in gratitude towards all these friends, spiritual friends, the material things we have, the safety, medical support, and then there may still remain a small collection of items, of things that we might want, that we do not have. But put that side by side with those things that you have already, 
make a, make a small heap, a mental heap of the things you would want to have and those things that you have already. Which is more? Not just in size, but also which is more valuable? Which of these two heaps is the better one? The one that you have already? Or the one of those things or people that you would want? Would you trade those things that you have for those things that you don't have yet? that the mind desires. Most likely not. can rest it a few minutes in this sense of contentment. The contentment that comes from recognition of the good things that we have in our lives, the relationships, family, friends, material things. And the contentment, the sense of good enough, Maybe not perfect, but most likely more than good enough. Letting this contentment pervade our entire mind, suffuse the mind and body, our entire being, with contentment, being free from wishes, from desires. A sense of being fulfilled. And then, when you are ready, we are coming to an end of this meditation. We can open our eyes again. Okay, so which of the two heaps did you choose? The left one or the right one? <laughs> the one that you have, or those things that you wish to have? The new things, huh? No. <laughs> ah. 
So yeah, if you really put it side by side in our mind, all the wonderful things, the support, the people, the situations that we have already, compared to those things that you might long for or aspire towards, that second heap is trifling small in comparison, isn't it? And if you had to give the first one up to get the second one, would you do it? No, never. Yeah. So all the good things we have encountered, especially the Tama, just imagine never having encountered it. And then, okay, instead you can get the new car or a new house, whatever you're longing for. The value is no comparison. So sometimes we have to show the mind, you know, and remind ourselves, ah yeah, there are so many good things going on. That's why nowadays often people recommend every day five minutes of gratitude meditation, which has a huge impact on one's subjective sense of well-being. Much more than getting a raise on the workplace or a promotion, uh, a degree, so actually, it's the contentment and gratitude that really contributes much more towards to one's subjective sense of well-being than some of the externals that we usually chase after or society runs after. And it's not a very sustainable way of trying to achieve happiness by chasing after food, another holiday here or there, people, whatever it is. There's no end. So I leave you with that reflection for this morning and let us also share merit with our departed relatives and friends and all beings. <laughs>